Are you looking for inspiration on a daily basis? Then check out Deal to Heal Teas. With our inspirational teas, you're sure to find something to inspire you. That's Deal to Heal Teas. Com. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear inspirational tea and be inspired all day. Let's go to deal to heal teas.com. Again, that's deal to heal teas.com. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this podcast, and I know you enjoy the Girl Dad Discussion Podcast, I'm your host, Ernest James, and I believe the relationship between a daughter and her father is one of the most important relationships a young lady can have. And therefore, my mission is to promote the daddy-daughter relationship by sharing the voices of girl dads to the world. So check out our podcast on every platform where podcasts can be listened to. And if you want to watch the podcast, check us out on our YouTube channel. Again, that's the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast with your host, Ernest James. Can you hear me, Eric? Yep. All right, all right. Well, welcome, 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 everyone, to the Earn the Earth podcast. I am Urban Urban J. I was gonna say I'm Urban J. <laughs> 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 I, <laughs> I am Ernest James. And I'm Urban James. And this is the Earn and Herb podcast. And I forgot our opening. I mean, I forgot our uh I forgot our our whole intro. We have practiced so many times that I forgot it. Uh, anyway, so we just gonna jump right in. Uh, our mission is to have the conversations that will change our communities because it is our belief that a strong family is the foundation of a strong community. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to the Earn and Earn podcast. If you haven't already, make sure that you listen, like, subscribe, and share to our podcast on all of your podcast listening uh, platforms, as well as our new YouTube channel. Make sure you guys go check that out. We changed our YouTube channel um, from just being a uh, one uh, podcast channel into a podcasting network. We're now under the channel, the Deal to Heal Podcasting Network. Again, that's Deal to Heal dot podcasting network. Uh, under that channel, YouTube channel, you now can find uh, the four podcasts that we have going on right now, including uh, the Girl Dad Discussions podcast, which you guys heard the uh, ad for, and um, three other podcasts, including this one. So make sure you guys go there again. Check out our new YouTube channel, the Deal to Heal Podcasting Network, in order to uh, check out the rest of our podcast, right? And also, if you ever start thought about starting your own podcast, go to, uh, you get your copy of Start Your Podcast Now in Only Three Steps, which is an ebook that I've written uh, to help people start their podcast. I've been on this podcasting journey a uh, little over two years, I think it's been um, definitely over 100 and some episodes uh, of my own podcast and about 30-something episodes on other people's podcasts. So um, people always ask me, how do I start a podcast? So I wrote the ebook, Start the Podcast Now, and only three uh, three steps. So if you guys um, are interested in starting your own podcast, the link is down below. But you can go to ebooksbyejames.com. Again, that's ebooksbyejames.com in order to get uh, your copy of uh, start your podcast now, ebook. So now that we're here, Urban, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right, man. I'm still in the land of the living, so I'm blessed about yourself. I am good. I'm good, tired as usual, but I'm good and still here as well. Uh, definitely glad to have a, a birthday recently, so I was uh, happy about that. So uh, yeah, we're here. So 
today, um, what are we what are we gonna talk about today? I know we got a lot of things we we mentioned, but uh, what what's what's on the agenda for today? Well, today we're going to talk about are, are your children ready for the workplace? Are they ready for this adulthood thing that we call adulthood? What you think? You think your children ready, Ernest? Uh, definitely not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. We're, we're ready or not. Uh, they, are, they are in this space now um, where they have to be ready, you know. Um, they have to get ready, right, because they're, they're in it now. Um, the youngest of, of my children uh, is my daughter who is 21. She is the youngest, so she just made 21 recently. So she is a, a young adult now. So ready or not, she's she's got to get ready. But the boys is already is like, hey, y'all, y'all, y'all in it, you know. And like she, like I said, she was the youngest one, so now she's officially a young adult. So I got all adult children now, you know. And so I'm like, hey, y'all gotta y'all gotta get with it. But um, do I think they're ready? No, not really. Um, and, and, and with my daughter, with my daughter, she, she, I'm glad that, that she's with me now, right? So she's, she's staying with me now. She's home from college and she just turned 21. So she's still young, right? So I'm, I'm glad that she's with me now. So now, uh, as I have been, you know, having conversations with her about, you know, being ready for the workplace, being ready for a job, actually looking for a full-time job instead of a part-time job. And then uh, not only a full-time job, but a job that makes decent money. You right. know, prior time now where you don't have no, you have no kids, you have no responsibilities. You know, I bought her a car for Christmas, so you don't even have a car note. You know, and so that means that you have full opportunity right here to set your life up exactly how you want it. You know, especially financially because you have no responsibilities. You know what I mean? And so, but uh, again, with, with her being young, like I said, she's only 21. Um, she she does have some responsibility, not responsibility, but she just does have some idea of what she wants uh, as far as taking care of herself. You know, but I'm trying to get her to look at the bigger picture. It's like, all right, it's more than just, you know, having enough money to put gas in your car and, and go get something to eat. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, start building now. Start saving. Start, you know, making some uh, um, adjustments, you know, in your finances and, and really learning what that looks like to be, you know, financial literacy and things like that. But um, do I think she's ready? Or or definitely even the boys, you know. My, my sons is like, you know, sometimes they have a time, hard time holding on to one job for longer than a couple months. I'm like, no, okay, you got need a career. You need something that you can you can build on, you know. Um, so do I think they're ready? Um, no, not really, but ready or not, you know what I'm saying? You're there now, you know. So what about you? You you think your kids are ready for it? Oh, well, they're already in it. Well, the older the older three, they're already in it. They've been working um, consistently. Um, but for me, I, I figure that they need to find a specialty, you know, because like you said, these young folks, they get a job, they start making decent money, but then they hear about another job, making more money, and they just be jumping back and forth. You know, they're not really stable. So for me, it's like, no, find your specialty. What is it? What is that thing that you really want to make as a career? And then that's what you go for. You know, you can start off with like the little small jobs here or there, you know, like we did, starting the restaurants or whatever. But, you know, the restaurants now, they make more money now than they did when we started because out of high school, I started at Burger King. I was only making, what, six twenty-five an hour? These kids coming through the door making $16, $18 an hour, you know. But I just don't want them to get, you know, stuck into one thing or just chasing money. You know, find your specialty. What is that, what is that thing that you want to make your career and, and stick with it, you know? Yeah, and, and and I think that plays a part of that plays a part in it, and I definitely have that conversation with them too. Like, first of all, I would I would suggest you find something that you like first. You know what I mean? Because like it was said when I was younger, and it still rings true today. If you if you're doing something that you love, then you never work a day in your life, right? So you never see work as work. You know, right. and I all the time I'm a, I'm a bricklayer by trade. 
Um, but I get up every morning to go to work. And I love getting up to go to work because that's what I love doing. I love my job. I love, you know, before I got into it, when I was just dreaming about it, you know, being young and saying, I want to work in construction and this is what I wanted to do. I already knew, like, I, that's what I wanted to do. So now I get to get up every morning and live out my dream as I could, and, you know, as far as a, an occupation, you know. And so that would be my first thing. Find something that you love first and then find out how to make money doing it, you know. And if, if you're whatever it is that you love, you can't necessarily figure out a way to make a living doing it. You know, you probably make some money, but not enough to, to carry yourself. Then you have to find something else to add to that, you know, and to be able to support yourself that way. But definitely, you know, I would always say start off with, with something that, that you love, you know, and not just necessarily chase the money, um, even though sometimes, you know, at a young age, like, like I said, my daughter's 21, and in the 20s, I think all my kids are in their 20s at some age. I think all of them are in their 20s now. You know, but your 20s is the perfect time to figure it out, yeah. you know. And if you go chase the money, you know, this is the time to chase it, you know, because you have the, the, the strength and the ability to do it, you know, without all the responsibilities that, that come along with full adulthood. You know what I'm exactly. saying? So what you think? Do you think they should start figuring out what, what career they're going to have in high school or coming into high school? Because for me, um, um, I think, I believe by the time they graduate eighth grade, they should have at least two or three things that they believe that they want to make a career. Because, you know, coming in as a freshman, for me, I believe you should start off whatever those three things is and start taking, you know, classes or whatever the interest is into it to see if you really want to stick with it. You know, like like you, you did Brickland. You know, for me, it was truck driving. I've always wanted to drive trucks, you know, but when I graduated high school, I didn't really pursue the trucks at first. You know, I started just trying to get whatever job, whatever came first, that's what I jumped on. But, you know, after a while, you know, jumping from job to job, working in the warehouse, you know, working at the steel mill, then the opportunity came for me to actually get my CDL and I jumped on it because that was something that I always wanted. I always wanted to drive truck. So I've been doing that for what? Almost 20 years now. So what do you think? When when should they start looking or figuring it out? I, I would definitely say in, in grammar school, right? And because as part of my story, and I say it all the time, I figured out what I wanted to do in eighth grade. So when we had a, a career day or a career assignment or something like that, and it was like, okay, what do you want to do You know, when you grow up? Um, first of all, I already knew I was working construction. So just by being the child that was always building stuff, you know, I always, I built a clubhouse, you know, when we were little, I built a clubhouse, I built a go-kart, you know what I mean? So I was always like building stuff anyway. So I already had an idea like, you know what? I love building stuff. I love making stuff. So I want to go into construction. So I already knew that. Um, but when this assignment came around, then I really had to dive deep into it. Like, okay, what does that really look like? You know, what are the occupations in construction? You know, and that's as I began to go through the different trades as, as uh, you know, seeing what the different trades were, electrician, bricklayer, carpenter, you know, all these different um, uh, trades within the construction industry. Um, when I came across Brickland and then I've seen it, I started reading up, reading up on it. I was like, that's it. That's the one I want to do. And so I already knew that coming into high school. Um then when we got into high school, with our high school that we were at, they didn't have bricklaying classes, but they did have a construction class, you know? And so it was more, actually more geared to, towards carpentry, but all uh, construction trades have a a level of commonness in it, you know what right. I mean, that all gels together. So and no matter where you start, you're gonna learn something about the other trades. And so that's where I went. I went to took that class, um, got into you know learning carpentry. Actually, got a job. One of my first construction jobs was as a carpenter. You know, uh, before years later, actually getting into the bricklaying field. That's why I started as a, as a carpenter. So, um, but yeah, I think at eighth grade you have an idea. Again, if you don't have an idea about a career, you do have an idea about what you like. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You can get back to that. Again, that's why I started. I knew I liked to build stuff. So I started there, you know? And so I think if we can, around those ages, around eighth grade, you really start thinking about what is is that you'd like to do and then what uh, careers are open in those areas. You know what I'm saying? And then as you look into those areas, then you can go deeper into, okay, how much, you know, does those, you know, jobs pay, those careers pay, what does that look like long term, you know, really start looking into it. Um, but I definitely think by eighth grade, they should have an idea of, you know, again, like you said, at least three things of what right. they like, you right. know, usually yeah. your interest. And if you know your interest, then at least that you can start there to looking at the careers that involve those same interests. Right. For me, by the time I graduated eighth grade, I either want to do auto mechanics be an electrician or do the truck driving. And it's crazy because I started in school. I took classes for auto mechanics. I took classes for uh, starting off with um, an electrical field. But by the time I graduated high school, I just, I don't know. I was supposed to start signing up to be an electrician. Then I wanted to make some other choices in my life. So I kind of put that to the side and uh, just start getting whatever jobs I can get just to you know make some money. But I still had in my mind those three things, like, okay, one of these things I'm gonna do. So like I said, when the truck driving came around, that's when I jumped on it. And it's, it's crazy because, so I'm gonna ask you, what's the most important thing in, in finding, well, not just finding what you want, what, where on the scale do you think work ethic should fall? as far as finding that career? Um, work ethic is is right at the top, right? And, and that's regardless of any career or just even if it's not a career, just a job in general, right? The work ethic plays a part because if you don't have the work ethic, you can't even hold a job. You know what I'm saying? And and I know that even as, as especially young kids, you know, uh, even we're going to even talk about this, about, what is the age, you know, I know the legal age that you can get a job, but I remember right. having having a conversation with my wife at the time uh, when our sons got old enough to work. She didn't want them to work. And I'm like, no, this is the perfect time for them to work. Like they're 16 years old. You know, oh, this yeah. is the perfect because now that's what builds their work ethic. Now they can work. Now they I can't hear you. Mm -mm. And so I think it is uh, important, uh, again, even with my kids, when they turned 16, I, I was like, I, this is the exact time for them to start working. You know, they were involved in, in sports and things like that. You know, right. and I always said, you know, that's that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But that's not necessarily going to get you prepared for the real world. You know, everybody want to go to the NFL. Everybody want to, you know, do all that. And I'm not knocking my kids or anybody else's kids. But I say it like this. If you're not the number one player on your team, just start there. If you're not the number one player on your team, your chances of going to the league is, is not realistic. You know what I'm saying? Then not only your team, but let's just say your district, because now you got to play other schools. You're not the top player in your district, you know, and it just keeps going up and up. Yes, you might make it to college, you know what I'm saying? But how, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just a lot into that. So am I knocking sports? Definitely not, because I think it's needed. I think it does teach you some kind of work ethic and, and things, but it's, it's not the same as getting the job and going to work, you know, right. and having responsibilities that you are responsible for. Even in, in sports, you know, there's a, a, a level of, you know, there are some things you're expected to do and you're supposed to do, but you don't necessarily, if you if you don't do it, what's going to happen? The coach going to sit you down? You know what I'm saying? You don't get to play? You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, no, you need some real world experience like if you don't work you literally don't get paid you know what i'm saying you don't like, eat like, either <laughs> right so i i think uh um but that comes with age and so i think that 
once you as you start them young, as soon as they can get a job, 16 years old, um, then they can start building that work ethic and knowing what that means. And also, I think it's it's good to start them that young because it gives them a different uh, look at what you do as a parent. You know what right. I'm saying? Because they see you getting up, going to work every day, and then you have to come home and you have to pay bills or whatever. But when you say, I got to pay bills, you know, so, you know, whatever, it don't hit the same. But then when right. they start working and seeing like, oh, I didn't spend, you know, this many hours working, they gave me this much money, and now my phone bill is due, and it's my whole my whole check. You know what I'm saying? So now when they start doing that, then it gives them a different respect, even for your sacrifice as a parent. And when you don't do that, then they get to be 18, 19, 20, 21. And now they're just now entering the workforce and they have no idea of how it how it really relates to your everyday life. You know, and then if you if you're if they're still in your house under your roof, they still don't get the full thing. Uh, idea of it because you're still taking care of the major responsibilities, you know? And so it's like, okay, where does that work ethic really kick in at, you know? And then if the later you wait to learn it, the harder it's going to be, you know? And then if you happen to have kids and other stuff start coming along, so now you're getting more responsibility, then your, your work ethic don't match it. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like, okay, now you, you're here, now what you're going to do, you know? And so now you got to learn. Not only do you got to learn, but you got to learn, but it's more at stake than it was if you did when you was younger. You had, you have a learning curve. You have the time and space and opportunity to learn. But if you start waiting until you get older, you know, especially in your 20s and later 20s, to now start picking it up, well, now you got other things that's, you know, uh, at stake now. You know, you got your own livelihood. You got more likely got a car note by then. You got kids by then sometime, you know? Right. And so just more stuff that's added on to it. So uh what about what about you and your and your viewpoint, you know, the importance of, of work ethic? Well definitely work ethic is definitely at the top. Uh but I me personally I believe you should start at the age of 12. Start giving them some kind of job, some kind of uh chore, if you will. To make them uh, consistent yeah, with it, chores. Yeah. So, and for me, I think chores is, is the best place to start. Like I said, 12 years old, it gets them in a the mindset of these things need to be done and somebody's got to do it. And if it's your job, then do it. And, you know, and try to get into the point where it's in their mind that you don't have to tell them every day. You know, every time mm -hmm. they come home, they know this the week to cut the grass or this the week to uh, mow the lawn, uh, pick up the leaves or you know, take out the garbage or whatever, you know, come in and, and do a chore in the house. Uh, this is my week or my month to do the bathroom, or whatever the case may be. So I think you should start at 12 and that'll help, you know, give them a general idea. So by the time they're 16, 15, 16, and they can actually get a job job and start getting paid for it, they'll understand, you know, the importance of work ethic, the importance of if it needs to be done, go ahead and do it. You know, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it's a struggle, man, even with, with, with my children, even the older ones, even though they have a job that they go to every week, or every day, sometimes little small stuff like, hey, uh, Monday is garbage day. Why you didn't take the garbage out? You know, <laughs> like sim simple stuff like that. You know, they kind of get sidetracked. So you got to kind of stay on them, you know, and, and just keep it in, the, in their mind like, hey, this thing needs to be done. That needs to be done. You know, make sure you do it. And for me, I think if you stay on them like that, that'll make them become, you know, what they call resilient workers. You know, they they won't just go to work because you got some kids who go to work, but they don't really work. So eventually mm -hmm. they end up getting fired <laughs> or, you know, mm -hmm. start getting reprimanded. And then they come home and they don't understand why. Well, I, I was there. I was I was in um, I was uh, at the job site. It's like, okay, so what was you doing if they had to say something to you? Um, I wasn't doing nothing. I was just standing around waiting for somebody to tell me. You know, it's like, they ain't got to tell you what to do if you know what your job is. And if, like, for my kids, it's like, okay, well, if, like, I work in a factory. If your machine is down and there's nothing for you to do, then look busy. Because mm -hmm. if you look busy, 
then they won't really say nothing to you. But if you just stand around and the boss come through and you leaning on the machine and they look and everybody else working, of course he's going to say something to you because he wondering why you just standing there. You know, okay, your machine down, ain't nothing you can do. Why you don't go help your, your co-worker? You see right. this person line is backed up, you know, go give them a hand. But, you know, this generation, they don't think like that. And I, I, two things. One, I want to go back to one of the things that you said earlier, uh, which is something that not only did I teach my kids or preach to my kids, um, but also as a as a mentor, is something that I I also teach. You know, and that is do what needs to be done because it needs to be done. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like you said, some is some is need, something that needs to be done, and somebody got to do it. It's like take take the responsibility to become responsible. You know, right, somebody right. didn't have to ask you to pick up a piece of paper when you see it standing and we see it's in there. Exactly. You know, somebody I shouldn't have to tell you to take the garbage out when you just put a piece of garbage on top of the load <laughs> and it's the top. The yeah. you know what I mean. And you're trying to make sure it don't fall off <laughs> off the pile. Like, no, if it's falling off, that means it's full. You know, exactly. It. You know, I shouldn't have to tell you to do that, but become that person that not only are you responsible, but you look for the opportunities to be responsible. You know, even as myself now, it's the first thing I do when I come home from work, as soon as I walk in the house, I look for the garbage cans. Just automatically, every, every day. Automatically. You know, I come in, okay, I'm home. First thing I do is look to see, does the garbage need to be taken out? You know, and, and even things like that, because to me, it's like, all right, before I get relaxed, while I'm still in work mode, let me do what needs to be done around the house, you know. So when I say, okay, I'm cool, now I forget to, you know, take my shower and chill, then I can take my shower and chill. And you ain't got to come behind right. me and say, oh, the garbage needs to be taken out or, you know, this needs right. to be done, right. that needs to be done. Um, but I think, you know, again, we start them young with that mindset of, you know, do what needs to be done because it needs to be done. You know, nobody should have to tell you. If you see it needs to be done, just do it. You know, and those though that uh, mindset will help you so much, not only in your career, but it helped you so much in life when you just see something that needs to be done and you just address it just because it needs to be addressed. And the other thing what you were talking about with the resiliency in the workplace, that's definitely a thing, you know, especially for the young kids, because it's like, um, hey, you know, why didn't go to work today? Oh, I was tired. Okay. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what that got to do with it? You know what I mean? Why didn't feel good? Okay, what that got to do with it? You know what I mean? It's like that's that you still have a responsibility, and that's going to catch up with you sooner or later. And then, like yeah. you said, when you start not doing the work when you're at work, or you start calling off and all these things, then you end up getting fired, or you quit because you don't like how things is going, so you quit and jump to another job and another job, you know. And again, that's dealing with that or not dealing with that resiliency that we talked about, you know, it's like, no, you need to be a resilient worker. You need to know what it is to hang in there, even if it's a job that you don't like, you know, especially when exactly. you don't get a matter that you don't like it. And that might even be a better place for you to be in a job that you don't like because you learn how to deal with conflict. You learn how to do your job under pressure. You know, yeah. you learn all this other stuff that is going to make you, make you more valuable as an employee you know, for the next opportunity that comes along that might just be better for you, but not just jumping from job to job just because, you know, but again, dealing with that, um, with that uh, resiliency, you know, that we have. But I want to, I want to ask you a question though, because right now, especially, and I'll just say even with my daughter, because our kids is around the same age, some of them, you right. know, and again, Ashanti just turned 21. So, you know, I know you, some of your kids are around that same age. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as I know, you know, she's not necessarily interested in the clubs scene as far as like clubbing, but yeah. it's still the kicking it. You, know, you might not get <laughs> in a club, but you still want to, you know, right. you still want to get out and do whatever. And they, they uh, you know, when they're young, you have that idea of, you know, the, the career versus the club. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, which one is it? Uh, do I go to work tonight or do I, you know, go to go to the job? And I remember uh, I was working at a factory and uh, it was a kid had got hired there. 
And this was a couple of years ago. So right now, like minimum wage in some places, like 15 bucks or something like that. But this was years ago before it was even that high. And, you know, it was uh, maybe six, seven dollars or something like that. But the job that I was working at was starting you off at 15 dollars an hour. Okay. And so this kid had got hired. He was 19 years old, fresh out of high school, first job out of high school. He's making, you know, $15 an hour. You know what I'm saying? And he's working. But we having this conversation every day because his friends is calling him on his, on his cell phone and talking about how much fun they're having. You know, and he's like, oh, me and my friends are having so much fun and I'm here at work and whatever. I'm like, dude, your friends are broke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you're making, right. you're making the type of money that some adults is not even making. And this is your first job. You know, like if you're able to stick this out and really learn, you know, even if you just stay here and learn, it's only going to go up from here. You know, I'm like, but if you start, if you leave here, you know, and mess up this opportunity and then end up going to like McDonald's or something again, you're going back down to like six, seven dollars an hour. And then you have plenty of time to hang with your friends. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But you're going to be broke. You know what I mean? I'm like, dude, you got to look at the look at the overall picture. You're like, yeah, your friends are having fun right now. But you will be having even more fun when you got more money to spend to do whatever you want to do, you know. And that kid ended up quitting. He was like, no, I want to go hang with my friends or whatever. And he ended up quitting, you know, quitting that job. And, and I haven't seen him since then, so I don't know how he's doing. But I was just like just trying to get him. It was probably like three days we were having this conversation. I'm like, dude, do not quit this job. Because mind you, I was in my 20s at this time. And that was the most I had got paid. You know, right. and I was hard, you know, like I said, I'm about a good almost 10 years, not 10, but I was a good uh six or seven years older, you know, than this kid. And I had already been wow. working about six or seven years. And I'm like, dude, it took me six years to get here. And you just got here straight out of high school. Exactly. I'm like, dude, do you understand the opportunity that you have to be able to start to build your life, especially without responsibilities. You know, you still ain't got no responsibilities. So you got all, it's, it's all up from here. You know what I mean? Uh, but unfortunately, he didn't He didn't get it. You know, like I said, he still end up, end up quitting. Um, but I think that that's a, a major part to, to really get the kids to really understand how much uh, of a part your income pay, plays in your life, yeah. how much a part, you know, your work ethic plays, you know, and we start thinking about careers, you know, having a job, you know, talking to some people who have a job that they hate, you know what I mean? And some people, some people might even be making good money at their job, but they hate going there, you know, right. like, so how miserable is that? Cause you spend probably more, I wouldn't even say half of your life. You put, you spend more than half of your life actually at work, you know what I mean? And so now that means you spend a half of your life doing something that you hate every day. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, no, you got to look at it a little differently to really be able to, you know, uh, categorize what's most important to you in a career and in a lifestyle and then, you know, see what's going to get you there. Yeah. See, these, the children that are, that come up under us, the sad thing is they have more privilege than they have hardships, you know, mm -hmm. because as a parent, you know, we grew up, we we was poor, we had hardships, you know, but our, it's crazy because our parents was teaching us how to be entrepreneurs and we didn't even realize it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? We we learned customer service, <laughs> we learned money management, we learned uh, product management, we, like, we learned all that stuff as kids. But for our kids, it's like, we, we treat them, we don't want them to have hardships so we we almost give them everything, not necessarily everything they want, but a lot of what they want. But we don't really let them see the value that it takes, the hard work that it takes that they are able to get what they want. Like you said, they see us go to work every day. They hear us talk about going to work every day and paying bills. But the understanding of the reality of it, they really don't understand it. I mean, it's because for us, it's like, well... We don't really want to put that burden on our kids. But the only way they're going to understand it is for you to show them what it really means. Show them how fast that check was $1,000 <laughs> and 
Friday, <laughs> come Sunday, <laughs> you you just about down to 30 bucks because you're trying to make sure all the bills are paid. You know, I always tell them, I said, look, this light, this gas, this water, it don't, it don't pay itself. This mortgage, it don't pay itself. These cards and stuff, it don't pay itself. You know, somebody's got to work and do the things that's needed to make their income so that you can have these things. Even, like you said, you, you bought your daughter a car. I helped my children get their cars. And I still got to, hey, did you get the oil change done? And, and it's amazing. Like, they just think you just gas it up and go. Gas it up and go. Just enough gas to get where you're going. And then that's good. <laughs> It's like, no, you, you got to check your fluid. You, you got to check your oil. Make sure your oil get done. You got to check your air pressure. You know, you I come out there sometimes because, you know, I make it a habit, you know, growing up, I always maintain all my stuff. So every time I come outside, when I'm, and I guess it's through the truck driving thing, when I'm walking up to my vehicle, I'm, I'm viewing it. I'm looking at the tires. I'm looking around, see if there's any scratches or, you know, it's just, just a habit that I have. So I do the same thing to their cars. And when I walk out there, I'm like, hey, do you, you know your tire on the flat? They have no idea. <laughs> it's like, so it made me wonder, like, well, how long was it on the flat? You were just driving around? <laughs> you ain't even checking your vehicle. Right. You, know, you can't so, tell that it's not driving right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, the, the wheel ain't shaking. You know? But it, it's, it's just crazy. And I think it's because they're so used to just having. So I think we really need to dial back and really start not necessarily giving them hardships, but really, really in tune them into what it takes to have something and what it takes to keep it. Because you can get anything, but it takes a lot to keep it. You know, you can go buy a car, but if you don't take care of it, you ain't going to have it too long. Same right. thing with a house. You can get a house, but if you don't pay the bills, you ain't going to have that too long. So I think we need to kind of dial back and really start teaching these kids the more important things of value in life and start really just giving them everything they want. Yeah. And I, and I think what you said about um, giving them hardship, I don't even think you have to give them hardship. You just give them responsibility. You know what I mean? And and that comes with a level of, uh, I don't even want to say hardship with that, but it comes with a level of responsibility. You know, when you start, you know, getting, uh, becoming a responsible person, that's just some things that you got to do. You know what I'm saying? And so you mentioned about us growing up, because I remember having a conversation, you know, and you mentioned about us growing up and everything that we learned as far as being entrepreneurs, because we used to sell uh, candy and different merchandise growing up, right? And so for the listeners, uh, I'm sure this is in all the major cities, but definitely in Chicago, when you would come off the uh, expressway, yeah, you're getting off the expressway to, to come back into the regular parts of the city and you come off the expressway ramp, is always someone there that's, you know, are used to because now they start changing a lot of stuff. They make you get yeah. competitive yeah. licenses and all this stuff. But you used to come off the expressway and there will be people there uh, on the side of the expressway that will be selling stuff, you know, peanuts and T-shirts and banks and, you know, ceramic statues and all of that. And that was what we did. You know, that's as kids did. growing up, that's that was our first. You know, job. today, <laughs> right? And, and and also uh, selling uh, boxes of candy at the supermarket. You know, we'll walk to the supermarket, and when people come out or going in, and say, "Hey, would you like to buy some candy?" You know, or whatever. And and so we did that also. So again, those values that we learned from that, and how to. Uh, manage money, you know, profits and losses, knowing that, okay, it takes $30 to get a, a 60 pound bag of peanuts. That's going to make you 60 individual bags. And so you sell those 60, you take 30 and buy the next bag and you got $30 profit. You know, you, we learned all of that <laughs> while we were exactly. doing it because we were, we were in the midst of it. We were doing it, you know, and I remember even having that conversation, you know, uh, with my wife, with the older boys was saying, Hey, you know, Let's let them sell candy. And this was this a part that I thought was just just even worse. You know, when we had that mindset of not wanting your kids to go through what you went through, our kids were in sports, right? And so as the sports, they would give them things to do for a fundraiser. Like my, my wife wouldn't even let them do the fundraiser. Like she would buy all the tickets. I'm like, no, you're, you're taking away the opportunity <laughs> for them to work. You know what I'm saying? Like they already don't have a job. You know, they're playing sports. So this is their part of their sports is to sell these tickets. And now you don't want them to sell the tickets. 
you know, and I'm like, you're, you're taking away an opportunity for them to grow up, for, for them to be able to learn those skills that even she learned when she was little because she did the same thing as right. we did with selling things. But she was like, no, nah, right. I don't want to do that. And I'm like, but you <laughs> you have, and, and she's a very hard worker, right? Anybody that knows her knows she's a very hard worker. And I'm like, you're taking away a major part that made you have the work ethic that you have was exactly. because of how we grew up and the responsibilities that we had and, and, and the opp opportunity that we had to sell things and, and to learn that, you know, to be able to do that. I'm like, but we're taking that away, the opportunity away. So now they're older, even now, like they don't even have the same work ethic, you know, and I would tell her, they don't work as hard as you work. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, but now, so now they have to learn it. And then they're uh, the older ones, they're boys. And I'm like, so now not only do you have to learn it for yourself, but now if you have children, if you get married, if you start a family, now it's not just you. Now you're responsible for a whole family. You know what I mean? And you have to have the work ethic to stick it out. You have to have the, you know, the work ethic to get out there and go to work to take care of your family. Cause now it's not just you, you know, but that's all stuff that they should learn <laughs> as they go along. But unfortunately, sometimes we we're not learning it uh, at the early ages like like we should. So uh, we're stuck with that. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think as especially as being males, learning work ethic after in your middle twenties to me, I feel like that's the that's the worst. Like that's mm -hmm. the hardest time because, like you said. By that time, it's possible you got a child. You know, it's it's possible you you got a, a girlfriend or or some of them. Some people get married at a young age. You know, I got married at a young age, but you know, I was I had worked at it. You know, we we started working very very young. You know, mom and dad used to have us out there, man, and man, we was out there more than a postman. <laughs> and no matter what weather it was, you know, but even getting married at a young age. I already had that work ethic. So when my children came along, everything that I needed to do, I was able to do it. You know, they never had a hard day in their life because their father had a serious work ethic that he got from his parents, you know. And I try to put that in them now because I don't want them to wait until they have a family and now they're trying to figure out, oh, well, how do I make this work? Or how, you know, how do I fix this? Or how do I do that? You know, because if, if they can't figure it out, guess what they're going to do? They're going to come back to mom and daddy. You know, I did my part already. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you're supposed to be taking on, you supposed to be taking this mountain on your own. You know, I help you out, but I ain't supposed to be carrying the load. You know, so I, I think we need to really, really put that work ethic in them. You know, teach them the values of customer service, the value of uh, money management, because they definitely don't have the money management, I, I I don't understand it. It's their single kids, children. I have seven children, and they have less money than me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, make it make sense. I don't I don't understand, you know. But I mean, they coming along though. They coming along because you know, our parents they really instilled in us a lot of life values and, and even though we grew up poor man I, I wouldn't change it for the world because it made me you our siblings it made us into the parents that we are today you know it made us be able to survive because it don't matter what happens you know if, if you lose a job we we have the resilience you know what i'm saying it's like i'm gonna make it happen you know one way or another i'm gonna make it happen if i gotta go buy a box of Snickers or a box of m ms you know, whatever, you know, I'm going to make it happen. And that's what I want, you know, this generation to have that I'm going to make it happen. It got to be done. Somebody's got to do it. And, and I'm going to make it happen. All right. All right. So we're going to be ready to get out of here, Irvin. Uh, so before we go, uh, I'll let you have the last word as far as a word of advice or uh, something like that for our listeners. Uh, to the listeners, thank you guys once again for tuning in to the Earn and Earth podcast, where we try to have the uh, conversations that are needed to help move our communities forward and our families, uh, definitely talking fatherhood, faith, 
and uh, and family. And so, uh, Irvin, I'll let you have the last word. Um, so give us a word to get us out of here. All right. So to the listeners who's ever listening or watching, if you have children or you you think you're going to have or want children in the future, you know, one thing to keep in mind, teach them responsibility. Teach them how to work. Give them that work ethic. Long, long way in their life. And, and don't don't always give them what they want. Give them what they need, but make them earn for the things that they want. And, and they'll grow to be really good adults. All right. We can't end it no better than that. To the listeners, once again, thank you for tuning in to the Earn and Earth podcast. Um, and, um, yeah, that's about it. So until next time, y'all, be blessed. We out of here. Hi, guys. If you're enjoying this podcast, then I know you'll enjoy the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. I'm your host, Ernest James. And on my podcast, my guests and I discuss topics and ways to help us to heal in every area of our lives. I believe that everyone can and should live a life that is whole, healed, and healthy. And therefore, I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill to deal with their problems, heal from the pain, and to fulfill their purpose. So check out our podcast. We're on Google Podcasts, Spotify, or even on Audible. And if you want to watch the podcast, check us out on our YouTube channel at Deal to Heal with E. James Podcast. Until then, see you soon.